Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Welcome to another edition of Encounters here on Akal Channel. We're bringing you an ordinary conversation with extraordinary people. Today we have a very extraordinary person, a man of many talents. Um, he's a doctor, he's an MMA fighter, he's a singer and he is a biting satirist. His name is Subhik Sen Kandola and we welcome you to the Akal Channel Encounters. Thank you. Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. So Big Singh, you are indeed a man of many talents. Where does it all begin? You're a doctor, you're, you're an MMA fighter. Who uh, are you? Who is this enigma? Well, as, as I explained before, I was, uh, I was born as a breech baby. Uh, so I was born upside down. And uh, you know, as my mum sometimes says, you know, so I have a tendency to uh, uh, do the unusual. Uh, so I think from, from an early age, I've probably not been quite uh, normal, I'd say. You're working your way through the stereotypes. Yeah. <laughs> and destroying them one by one. Well, yes, yeah, certainly. But again, it's not something I'm, I'm consciously trying to do. Uh, it's never been my agenda to, to purposely go out of my way to destroy a stereotype. Uh, I've always been somebody who believes in following their heart uh, and just being themselves. Uh, and that's the only thing I've, I've ever tried to do, is just to express myself and, and, and to be myself. But you're, you're an actual doctor, yes. uh, an A&E doctor, mm. saving lives. Yes. So, with regard to that, was that sort of like a typical Asian family upbringing, Munda doctor bane, solicitor bane? Mm. How did that come about? Was that was that a chosen field? Well, I, w I was lucky in the sense that both of my uh, my parents were educated uh, at a time when uh, a lot of people weren't educated. Uh, you know, they, they both studied in in the UK, um, and uh, so I, I wouldn't say I had uh, a pressure on me uh, as such as a you know like a you know, some you know some people talk about a real sort of uh, 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 pressure when when their parents are not um, educated, and then they put pressure on their kids to become educated. To but be what they couldn't be. To be what they couldn't be, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, I'd say that it was kind of taken as a given in my family that uh, I would uh, go into some kind of a profession, not necessarily as a doctor. Uh, my younger brother is a is a solicitor, but I think the expectation was there that we would uh, uh, excel in a professional capacity, probably. So he's a solicitor and you're a doctor? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're breaking the stereotypes, we're attempting to do that. <laughs> yeah. but, you, but you have though, because mm. you've become a doctor mm. and a, a, a typical Asian stereotype would be mm. you've become a doctor mm. and that's it. You've yeah. now achieved what it was that you were supposed to achieve. Yes. The dream is complete, so yeah. to speak. But that, it hasn't stopped there for you. No, no. I, I, for, for me, I was, I, I was never satisfied as, as, uh, with that. Um, I always used to... Uh, I've always resented uh, being um, pigeonholed uh, and being put into uh, sort of like a, a typecast role. Uh, I used to find it very strange sometimes in community settings when people would come up to me, because I didn't want to be defined uh, by my profession. Yeah. Uh, so I always found it odd when, when you know, people greeted me that way. And I found it odd that uh, uh, people put doctors on, on such a pedestal and I was always uncomfortable with that. Um, so for me, I've always had mixed feelings about the profession and you know, my, my role in it. Um, and uh, I, I guess I, I never was satisfied to be just a doctor, if that makes sense. Yeah, but in an Indian yeah. sort of context, a doctor is one level, one rung down the line from, from God. From God, yeah. From, yeah, from yeah. somebody who's saving people's lives. You have the, yes. the power to save and, and, and not. Yes. But um, from being a doctor, mm. from the limitations of that, mm. of being pigeonholed, like you say, you didn't yes. want to be pigeonholed, um, as just a doctor, mm. you moved on to sort of boxing and martial arts and mm. MMA yep. um, competitively. Yes. At what point were you a student of martial arts mm. and at what point did it become more than that and, and become competitive? Well, my father was, uh, was the biggest influence in my life regarding uh, martial arts. You know, he'd uh, learnt martial arts as a, as a youngster. You know, he was from the, the Bruce Lee era. You know, so yeah. he, was a, he was a big Bruce Lee fanatic. He had all the, uh, the Bruce Lee tapes, posters. He had nunchucks. Uh, he was a Taekwondo black belt. Uh, and, uh, you know, he uh, practiced martial arts at a time, uh, you know, in 60s, 70s uh, UK, when it wasn't a hobby, it was, uh, it was a necessity yeah. uh, for survival. You know, you often tell me stories about being chased around, you know, the back streets of Birmingham by skinheads on a, on a Saturday, you know, after football matches and things like that. Um, my dad takes a, a keen he interest. He was case study. He was a guest study, yeah. He always, always, always has been. So he's yeah. Yeah. Identifiable from a from Ident distance. Identifiable. So, you know, in, uh, in those days growing up, he would have been classed as a, as a vulnerable target. Yeah. Uh, you know, easy pickings for, uh, for, for racist gangs. Uh, but, you know, he was also a very robust individual uh, growing up. Uh, he, he was a good, he was a good, 
good fighter. He was a good street fighter, uh, and he learned the hard way. Um, so uh, I took from my father's uh, example. Um, you know, he inspired me to get into martial arts. We, we, for a long time, we actually trained together. We used to go to Taekwondo classes together, me and my younger brother uh, and my dad. And that was the first martial arts that, that we started off with. So coupled with that, I'd always had an interest in uh, Sikh martial culture, uh, Sikh military culture. That was always something, you know, inside me that I wanted to express somehow. People express it in different ways. Uh, for me, the way I expressed uh, being, a, being a warrior, being a soldier was, was through martial arts. Um, so I started off with Taekwondo. Uh, when I went to university, uh, I thought, well, I know how to kick now. Uh, you know, I want to learn something close range, yeah. you know, something practical, street effective. So I started learning Wing Chun. Then after I started learning that, then I started learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, when I was at university, the UFC was becoming very popular, and, and you could see how uh, you needed to be a good grappler. Y you know, as w if you wanted to be a good fighter in, in, in the modern context, you needed to be a good grappler and somebody that could fight on the ground as well. Started learning Jiu Jitsu, then I started learning wrestling. Um, and it was only actually when I started work as a junior doctor that, uh, and when I'd accumulated quite uh, a number of years of, of martial arts training, that I thought, you know, I want to test these skills out. Um, but, you know, f how do you test these skills out? You know, what are your options? How, how does somebody go about testing these things? You can either take some kind of a front line, a security role. You could be a, become a doorman. You could become a bouncer, a policeman. You could join the military. Uh, you could go out and start fights and test your skills out. Yeah. Or you can do it within the sporting arena. You know, so I chose to test my skills out against an equally trained, uh, skilled fighter who's you know spent the last eight weeks preparing and training for the fight in the same way that I have, and that's how I got into MMA. Okay, so you say that there, there was this underlying um, yearning. Yes. To to um, to live the ideals of the martial warrior of, of yep. with a Sikhi sort of aspect to it. Yes. Um, with that and Wing Chun also, mm. y you've become a bit of an enthusiast for Shastar. Yes. It's fair to say. Yes. So how did that come about? How how what was the genesis of of, of that passion? It must have come from from my father. It must have come from the uh, the stories of Sikh history, going to Sikh museums as, as a young kid. Uh, and uh, seeing my, my dad's uh, weapon collection, uh, always had a, a huge fascination for it. From a young age, I started learning Gatka. Uh, so, um, you know, for me, um, I remember, you know, being eight, nine years old, you know, having a, a, a Gripan, a sword in my hand, or a Murhatti, or a Lati, uh, or a Barshi, uh, was like an extension of the body. You know, I'd always have something in my hand, and, you know, I'd be spinning it around in the garden. So there was always a, a love um, for, for weapons. Um, and that's continued with me, you know, to this to this day. Even now, you know, I've got an extensive uh, collection of uh, of edged weapons, blunt type of weapons, uh, firearms. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I am uh, an enthusiast. So you're a licensed firearm holder. Yes. Yeah. Um, club owner, club club membership, yes. and the rest of it. But um, with regard to the Shastar Vidya, did, you've you've alluded to the fact that you did Gatka mm. for a little while. Mm. Um, are you sort of are you trained in in the use of all of the weapons you own? Because yes. you do have a quite a large collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. You know, um, I, I've never been somebody to admire weapons from a distance. Uh, you know, I, uh, I've always wanted to, to take a hold, you know, get used to the weight, get used to the balance, become comfortable with it. You know, a lot of uh, weapon skills is about becoming uh, comfortable and accustomed to your weapon of choice or your weapon of interest. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I kind of scare my family members at home. I've always got something in my hand, waving it around, you know, practicing moves in the mirror. Uh, you know, sparring. Yeah. I've got some padded swords. You know, me and my dad sometimes uh, will uh, spar each other with these padded swords, which are, are curved like a, like a talwar is. You know, and uh, it's great fun. Yeah. And just out of interest, what is your weapon of choice? Uh, weapon of choice. Uh, I like uh, a single saber, uh, and uh, I like my barabor, my twelve bore shotgun. Twelve bore. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we're talking stereotypes. You've you've destroyed that stereotype mm. of. Um, a Punjabi person mm. um, being railroaded into a profession, a, mm. a white collar profession. Um, you see, you've become a doctor. You didn't allow that to, to be the limit of your of your experience o on this realm. Mm. So you've become a a martial warrior, mm. so to speak, um, with you know the martial aspects of, of shastar, of uh, competitive uh, grappling and, and mm. fighting, boxing, mm. MMA. Mm. Um, the, the, the stereotype, when it comes to, when we're talking about martial arts, mm. th there's another stereotype that you've destroyed, and mm. that, dis th that stereotype is um, of a dastartari mm. fighter. Mm. Um, 
being restricted by by his the star by his long hair mm. you've put that to bed mm. uh, can you can, has, has it ever been a point where you felt restricted by your own gifts mm -hmm. in 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 the throes of a fight no on, honestly I, I can't say that i have you know i was very very surprised to hear from from other colleagues uh, that, uh, it, that this was an issue for, for Sikhs because for me, uh, you know, I had been brought upon stories about uh, great Sikh wrestlers, how wrestling was a part of our tradition, uh, you know, um, from Guru Angad Devji's time, Absolutely. you know, Sri Guru Hargobindji's time, wrestling was encouraged, uh, how wrestling was a popular sport for Sikh soldiers, Hari Singh Nalwa was a great wrestler, uh, and how, you know, uh, I'd seen lots of black and white uh, movies and even contemporary footage of Sikh wrestlers with patke, uh, you know, wearing these patke that they tie under their chins to stop it from slipping off. Um, so I, to me, uh, you know, the physical sports that we have in Punjab were what Sikhs do, you know, is what Punjabis do. So for me, it just seemed very natural. Um, and I was very surprised to hear that some people have an issue with it and they felt like they couldn't compete because they had uh, Dali and Kiss. Um, it was so easy. I mean, you know, I just uh, tied my hair at the back of my head and then, you know, I, I used to jump in. Uh, and when I was practicing and I didn't have time to tie my hair at the back, I would wear a rugby scrum cap, uh, you know, or like a wrestling ear guard, which would keep my patka on and keep my case intact. And, uh, you know, often when you're training, your patka does come off. You know, your dari gets messy all over the place in your face. Uh, your case will get everywhere. And that's what happens when you fight. You know, that, that is a part of fighting. You know, and uh, you have to make friends with the fact that you're going to get a bit sweaty, you're going to get a bit dirty and you're going to get a bit messy. You know, and uh, if you can't make friends with that fact, then, you know, maybe these kind of activities are not for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Spot on. Um, with regard to, to the restrictions that you haven't faced. Yes. Um, has it ever been an opponent or, or a promoter mm. that said, uh, hold on, what are you going to do with your hair, mate? Uh, has that ever occurred? Uh, I think. Possibly somebody had made a maybe made passing comments, but it was never something which resonated with me deeply. It was it's always just like it's never been a consideration before the fight. No, no, somebody no. Somebody saying, "Well, I don't mind fighting you. The weight's fine. Mm. Everything's fine. But uh, I'm not sure about your headgear. I'm not sure." Yeah. I, 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 in in all honesty, it's not even if some, even if a comment of that nature was made or something like that was said, uh, I don't think uh, I would pay much attention to it. Or I don't think it would uh, you know it would bother me too much. Uh, I think I would just uh, it would just be like uh, water over ducks back be honest with you, uh, because uh, I think the important thing is to stay on track and uh, keep focused on, on, on your goal and keep doing what, you, you know, what you're doing. Uh, so unless there's something which is actually preventing me from doing an activity and there's actually something, uh, you know, something tangible which is actually an obstacle that I need to circumvent in some way, then um, it's just an opinion or a, or a comment and you know, I haven't got time to to sit and reflect and, and take on board every every comment which comes my way. You know, like Winston Churchill says, you know, you can't stop and uh, throw stones at every dog that barks. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in the same way, any, any any comment that somebody makes or any issue somebody takes with you, you can't necessarily just uh, take it too seriously, I don't think. No. Uh, have you had much of that? Have you had uh, many sort of racially motivated factors to deal with when you're competing, um, for example, in boxing? Um, I think I've had one or two comments. But again, it's just so, to me, it's just so meaningless and so um, unimportant that it, it really, you know, it, it, it wouldn't make any, I mean, I think I remember when I had my first kickboxing fight and I heard somebody shout in the audience and somebody said, you know, F off Monty, this is not a cricket match, you know, something like that. And uh, to be honest <laughs> with you, I just laughed, you know, I just laughed, you know, because, you know, five minutes into the fight, I was actually smashing this guy up and uh, I was pulping him and then fair to your Absolutely, yeah. But you do look like Monty. <laughs> like, yeah. It hadn't occurred to me until now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's a fair comment. That's not really a racially angry. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, you know. So, I, I, like I said, you know, it's not something which, uh, you know, even now, you know, if you're going to be in the public eye, whether as a sports person or, or any uh, type of uh, uh, person that is known, or not even person that's known, anybody that's doing anything, you are going to attract some negativity, and uh, you are going to attract um, unfair comments. Uh, you know. And it's just a, p a part of life. You yeah, know, just just hate in general. Just hate in general. There'll be people that hate you for no reason other than mm. the fact that you exist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Jian, and welcome back to Encounters. We're still here with Shubhik Singh Kandola, um, musician, doctor, MMA fighter extraordinaire. Um, Baji, before the break, we were talking about your um, historically who you are. Mm. You're you're pretty much a Punjabi, a doctor, mm. an MMA fighter, a mm. martial warrior. Um, but moving ahead, you you still refusing to, to, to bow to the limitations of what regular people, mm. you know, how they live their lives. Mm. You're not content with just being a doctor. No. The martial aspect of your life um, hasn't been able to contain your aspirations. Mm. So you've moved on to becoming a satirist. Yes. So your videos, they've been quite popular, yeah. um, like millions of hits. Mm. Um, what made you do those? Are you, uh, basically, are you a political person? I wouldn't say I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm a political person. Uh, I, I'd say um, I like to entertain. And yes. it, it's funny because, you know, when some people ask me this question, I, when I made the, my comedy skits, it was very instinctive and intuitive when I, when I made them. And now, looking back, I'm kind of trying to rationalise them and uh, try and say, OK, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But to be honest with you, I think it was just pure performance. And it, you know, maybe there were thoughts running on in my mind and maybe you know, there were various uh, ideas that I had and, and, it, just, and it came out in, in, a, in a comedy skit. It was actually, uh, it sounds a bit sort of um, cliche, but it was literally just art for the sake of art. Uh, with contemporary so topics yeah. and subjects that were, that were very relevant at the time. Yeah. You had a, a Shastad one. Yes. That was uh, hilariously um, sort of accepted yes. or, or, or um, you know, received. Yes. You had another that was a, a sort of alluding to the, the controversy of the Ananda Karaj and, yes. and interfaith, um, in, interfaith Ananda Karaj ceremonies. Yes. Was it the backlash from India or from Sikhs in the UK that you had, a, a, that you had to um, sort of clarify mm. that this is satire and that I'm not being serious and that the Godora that you had pretended to be the, the, the um, general secretary or the Pradhan of yes. didn't actually exist. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it was... I think, it, well, it certainly the, the, the reaction was, was a lot uh, stronger in India. I think a lot of people in... Because th at the time when I, when I made that skit, it was a contemporary issue. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a very contemporary issue, um, but uh, you know, in, in India it wasn't probably on the radar as much uh, as it was in the UK. Um, so a lot of people in India they didn't understand the humour. Parts of the skit were in English, uh, small you know, small parts of it were in Punjabi, and um, they thought that I genuinely was a Gurdwara Pradhan, uh, you know, who was uh, marrying donkeys and camels uh, in the Gurdwara. Um, you know, and uh, you they be alluding to bestiality. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, they they were outraged. You know, and uh, the video went viral, and uh, there were a lot of angry people. Um, you know, seeing that seeing that video. So you clarified it did, after the clarification. Did it subside or did it continue? Did it, people it it subsided almost in, instantly. Al almost instantly. I mean, I had a few silly comments coming on after you know after that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, dripping in and out. But to be honest with you, that uh, that clarification video that I put out uh, killed it. Ah, that's close to here because mm. the, the satire was something that was new to, yeah. to you know Punjabi diaspora community. Certainly, when it comes to to Sikh issues, yeah, uh, you know, it's not something which is normally done. Uh, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not it's not the norm. It, you, you know, making jokes on which is something I've realised now. It didn't really occur to me at the time, to be honest with you. The thought didn't enter my into my mind that this is going to provoke such a uh, uh, you know such a reaction at the strong time. Reaction. Strong it reaction. Strong yeah. reaction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but you know uh, I talk about it in the, in, in the negative, but actually it also received a very positive reaction. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people really enjoyed it. A lot of people found it really funny. Uh, people who don't go to the Gurdwara, people who are not necessarily practicing Sikhs, or um, you know they were able to engage with it, which to me highlighted that uh, you know humor is something which can actually uh, engage a lot of people, which otherwise you know would be excluded. And and uh, have a, a look at a subject that, from a logical point of view. Mm through satire yes. allows you to delve into a situation that mm. otherwise is very serious and people are afraid to engage yes. with the subject material. Um, with regard to that, mm. do you find yourself sort of commenting on or looking at Sikh issues mm. through a sort of satirical 
point of view, even when you're not on camera. When, you, when you're looking at Sikh issues mm. that are um, somewhat serious, um, where people are, you know, only a stone's throw away from uh, becoming serious and, and mm. threats of violence and stuff like that. Mm. Which the, the, the Anandkar issue was one of those issues. Mm -hmm. It had the potential to, to um, turn violent. Yes. Um, with, when, when you see things like that, do you think that the Punjabi or Sikh community mm. requires a sense of humour? That it needs to be able to look at itself yes. um, in, in the prism of the world community mm. and see what, what you're actually doing, how you're behaving, how you're interpreting um, Yes, of course. I mean, you know, to me, um, you know, I'm, you know, I, I love being a Sikh. I'm very proud to be from from the Sikh community. But uh, it's it's important to reflect, uh, you know, on on ourselves and to reflect on our culture, you know, and our community as a whole. And uh, this, to me, is a is a, is a, a sign of weakness and a sign of a lack of development uh, if we're not able to um, uh, to you know explore uh, sensitive issues and to be able to touch on them in, in a light-hearted manner. Uh, you know, and, and explore them in a, in, a, in a different way. Okay, so you, you say, you know, a lack of development. Yes. Would you say, as a Sikh community, we're not um, mature enough to be able to sit down and rationalise mm. um, these sort of circumstances? Because uh, as, as the generation that we are, we mm. are born and bred British. Yes. Uh, we, we have an education. Mm. We have a, a rounder view of things mm. than the Sikhs in the Punjab mm. who are restricted to what media they content they, they can observe. Mm. Um, and therefore, they tend to be more polarised mm -hmm. in their thinking mm. um, and the, uh, their uh, adaptation of their you know, religion to the mm. wider world. Mm -hmm. um, in sense of that maturity, do you believe that the Sikh community isn't our generation, mm. isn't as mature as it should be or you would like it to be? It's, it's a difficult question for me to answer. Um, I think that uh, we as a community are like any other community. Uh, I think people are people, you know, we share the same gene pool as the rest of the human race. Yeah. Um, you know, we have our issues just like any other community does. Um, I would like to see more uh, satire uh, and more, uh, you know, humorous discussion of, of topics um, in general. Um, and it, I think that's a gap. That's a gap that we that, that we don't have at this stage. Um, I can't put it down to you know the Sikh community not being mature enough because I think we've just got so we've got such a variety of different people. You know, there, you know, we've got mature people, we have immature people, we have educated people, we have uneducated people. So for me to make a, a, a sweeping statement like that would would be unfair to all the educated people out there, to all the artists out there, um, you know, who do appreciate uh, change. But um, I do find that uh, we have uh, a large uh, section of society that uh, tends to uh, act first and, and think after. Okay, yeah, I, I, when I was talking about maturity, I was mm. talking about the larger mm. sections of our, of our community. Yes. You do mention that we, we have artists out there, we mm. have educated people out there, but the fact that they're marginalised by the larger section. I think that's an issue. I think that's, that, that's definitely an issue. Um, I think that there are uh, perhaps uh, you know, some institutions and some uh, sectors uh, you know, of uh, our affairs, of our culture, of our religious institutions, which are perhaps uh, run by a certain type of a person um, and, uh, you know, are enjoyed by a certain type of a person. Okay. Um, moving on, though, mm. you went from satire mm. to a fully-fledged entertainer. Yeah. Um, in the same r respect as you've spent the rest of your life, mm with strong connections to your cultural background, yep. you've become a Punjabi singer. Yes. Have you, well, some of your satire, some of your skits from, from earlier yep. um, were Punjabi songs. Yes. You, you were making satirical Punjabi S songs. songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember listening to one um, regarding um, being beaten up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, uh, well, being accused of looking at somebody's looking uh, girlfriend, at somebody's yeah. girlfriend yeah, and yeah. you weren't, but you were beaten up for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. <laughs> the, that, that's the comedy we were talking about. Yeah, this yeah. is the, the thing that we, we lack. If, if, yes. If, you, if I can uh, rephrase your own opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we lack that, that humour, mm. but you're now singing genuine serious songs as, yeah, a, yeah. as a British born Punjabi yes. in, the British, uh, in the Punjabi prose. Yes. How has that come about? Where That's a genesis that so far. 
Again, a completely separate thread in my life. Um, you know, I'd always had a love for uh, for Punjabi culture, Punjabi music, Punjabi Sangeet. Uh, I learned uh, Kirtan from a young age. Always been uh, a great fan of uh, the Taddi and Kavishri arts, uh, those folk arts in particular. You know, I have a, I have a great love for. Um, in terms of uh, Punjabi folk music, I've always loved uh, Kalina, uh, our folk legends, Mirza Saiba, um, Hiranja, etc. Yeah. Uh, artists like Kuldeep Manak, Sudhinder uh, and That's that's my kind of music. You know, when I, when I was growing up, I, uh, I used to sing English songs uh, when I was at school, when I was, at, uh, you, know, um, you know, growing up. But then when I went to university, a lot of people start asking themselves who they are. Uh, you know, they try and identify well, what music defines me, uh, what is actually, you know, what's, what's my music, where, where do, you know, you know, what type of music am I supposed to listen to, what, what, what reflects me. Stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, uh, you know, it was along that uh, journey that uh, I, I found Punjabi folk. Uh, fell in love with it and just, uh, you know, became uh, deeply attached to it. Hey, you say you used to speak, listen to English music, sing mm. English songs. What kind of music was that? What, what genre was you well, interested uh, To be honest with you, uh, it, it was whatever was contemporary at the time. I was a big fan of Tom Jones, believe it or not. Okay. And, uh, big no, fan I can yeah. believe that. Yeah, Why yeah, not? yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Elvis as well. Um, what else did I used to like? Uh, I used to like Shaggy. Yeah, I still do like Shaggy. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Pop popular music. Popular music, yeah. Whatever was contemporary in the charts yeah, yeah, at the time. Yeah, yeah. So you've gone from being a doctor yes. to an MMA fighter, martial artist, mm. to um, making skits and, and laughing at you know, your own community. Mm. Not laughing at your own community, but laughing with your own community yeah, yeah, yeah. about their own um, peculiarness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now you've gone to the other extreme of the spectrum of artists, from mm. martial artists mm. to, you know, gratification artists, mm. there is something for to, to be enjoyed by mm. all. How does how did that come about in terms of um, finding songs that you could either write yourself mm -hmm. or write with somebody mm -hmm. or somebody writes for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, how has that happened? Um, well, I used to make comedy bullying. Uh, when I was younger, uh, so uh, you know, again, self written, uh, self -written yeah, yeah, you know, in my Gruti Furti Punjabi, you know, uh, you know, a mixture of English and Punjabi thrown in, uh, and that was based on you know my experiences growing up, going to university, uh, going out uh, on on a night out to uh, you know uh, a Pangra gig, uh, you know, as a as a you know bright eyed eighteen nineteen year old student, you know, you, you the first time you've been allowed out of the house. Uh, and you experience these things and you see various, you know, a lot of these things for me were a culture shock, you know, with the upbringing that I'd had and the people yeah. that I'd hung around with. And it was just like, wow, you know, I didn't expect this. So you end up, uh, you know, writing songs and commenting on, on what you see around you. Uh, so that was one thread. That was the whole, the whole comedy side of things. Then as a separate thread, listening uh, to Punjabi folk, um, listening to the feeling, the power and the passion uh, in music like Taddi. You know, when I was doing MMA, when I was uh, training, hitting the bag, even now, I listen to Taddi, I listen to Jadan Singh Alamgir, uh, you know, uh, albums like Kharku Jannel by Jagowale. These type of things really make your hair stand on end. Yeah. And uh, I can actually, even though, uh, you know, they don't have a bass line or, or, a, or a kick drum to them, they, uh, they're just so much power and energy that I find that I can, I can train to that music. Um, the vocal music. The vo vocal music, yeah. you know, lyrically, it just, the, 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 that's our music to me. To me, yeah. that's, that, that is ours. Um, and that that means something, you know. Uh, so you know th that w was was a separate thread. So I've always, you know, I've, I've enjoyed both. Um, how did I end up singing it? I've always sung it, uh, but I'd sing other people's songs. Um, you know, uh, family would get get together and uh, they would say, "Charles Bixia, yeah, you know, let's uh, let's have a few lines, stand on the chair, you know, bust out a kali, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, some John Amor, you know, Badal Ali, Sonia Ajay, Mala Jaya." You know, off off we go. You know, and, and, yeah. we're, and we're bringing back some uh, some really uh, you know heavy duty uh, uh, Punjabi cultural uh, songs, um, and um, it was always something that I'd uh, wanted to do from a young age. In fact, I had I did experiment and dabble around with uh, music uh, when I was at university, but uh, I got messed around by a few music producers. Um, you know, I, f I found that uh, in order to get something recorded, you had to really kind of. Uh, uh, suck up to these people, yes. and uh, you had to really, uh, you know, gere karne pande sege, tarle karne pande sege, you know, and you had to really kind of um, uh, to mess around. And I became a bit disillusioned, disheartened with it. I just thought, I don't think this industry is for me, so uh, I left it well alone. Um, it was only much later on uh, that uh, you know, when I developed a, a personality, 
uh, as an MMA fighter and through other things that um, and I started posting songs of myself singing on, on, on Facebook singing old folk songs just a cappella with a camera phone yeah. you know I'll just sit there in my car just sing a song and just, just upload it I got really positive reception and Popsy you know world famous uh, music producer Popsy yep. just got in touch and said uh, you know listen uh, I'm a fan of yours um, you know do you want to make a track you know and by the way my name is Popsy and I'm a music producer you know, as if I didn't know who he was, sort yeah. of thing, you know. And, uh, you know, I w so I, we exchanged numbers, and uh, he said to me, um, you know, obviously you're a fighter, let's make some kind of a fighting track, you know, Jim Vigil Muscle Brunei Firda or something, something along those sort of lines. And, and I, said to, I said, yeah, that's fine, Popsy, we, we can, but in all honesty, I'm, a, you know, I'm a, a connoisseur of Punjabi folk music. I like Jalanji Tahuja music from the 70s and yeah. the 80s. And uh, he was just like really taken aback. I think, I don't think he expected me to say that. You know, he was just like, oh, wow, you know, that's where I learned my harmonium pieces from, and I love that kind of music. So, you know, it so was just... So a lot of people in the UK mm. would never have heard of Charanjit Uja. Mm. They'd, they'd have heard of the acts that he produced. Yes. But they wouldn't know that he produced The them. music, yeah, And yeah. then when you look at the roster of the people that he's, he's produced, yeah, yeah, there, absolutely, yeah. It's almost all Punjabi music. Music, yeah, from yeah. From that era. From that era, yeah. all yeah. Charanjit Uja. Uja. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Popsy must have been shocked that... Yeah, yeah, I think he, I think he was, but then he was also pleasantly surprised, and he's like, "Wow, you know, because I've done four tracks with Popsy now. Well, we've done, I've done three tracks with him. Two have been released. Yeah. I'm working on another one with him. Musically, we just really gel. You know, he. There are a lot of people in the Punjabi music industry that really should should have been doing hip hop and should just be doing hip hop. Yeah. There are a lot of people who really should give up doing Punjabi music, move to America, and do hip hop because that's them." That is them. That's who they are. That, yeah. That's who they are. Yeah, uh, but it happens that they are hip hop heads uh, who ended up being in Punjabi music because that was the e most easy and accessible platform for them to express themselves artistically. You know, but Popsy, he's a connoisseur of Indian music. So he, you know, he loves his Bollywood. Uh, he loves his, uh, you know, Tarmik Sangeet. Uh, he loves his Pangra music. Uh, he loves his old, uh, you know, Hindi songs. He loves his Kualis. You know, he's he's a connoisseur of of Indian music. You know, and. Uh, uh, you know, I've shared a lot of uh, tastes with him in that respect. So you know, we, we just we get on like a like a house on fire. You know, so and just uh, gelled naturally. Just gelled, just naturally gelled, yeah. But with with respect to everything you've achieved mm. and are still achieving, yes, and in the process of, how is it that there's not several of you? What I mean by that is UK-born individuals mm. with a love for their Punjabi heritage and culture more than able to be because we have per head a large proportion of our diaspora mm. are educated there, mm. there are doctors there are solicitors mm. there are town planners there are everybody mm. yet none of those are as well mm. like yourself mm -hmm if we were to use a musical sort of analogy or, mm. or an allegory, we'd say they were tumbiga. Mm. They were instruments that were finely tuned, mm. but still only restricted to the one string. Mm -hmm. Whereas to use a, 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 a European sort of allegory or uh, annotation, it, we would say, you know, add as many strings to your bow as to possible. Absolutely, yeah. And that's exactly what you've done. Why are you alone in this? Well, how, how come we don't have several artists yes. who are you know multi-genre multi mm. you know um, sort of discipline mm -hmm. if you like where, where are they all difficult question for me to answer to be honest i mean uh, i i don't have an issue with people being uh, being tumbe uh, or tumbia Nor me. Uh, you Nor know me. as long I as they're good as long as you know as long as they're good and they're in tune and they're good at what we do you know if we look at our community as a calm uh, as, as a people, we need uh, lots of different people that can do lots of different things with lots of different things to offer. Everything from entertainers to politicians to warriors to saints to sages to shopkeepers to everything. Yeah. You know, that's uh, any healthy community has got a, you know, uh, a widespread. And I think, you know, I do think the Sikh community does have a widespread. And I think one of the issues is the issue of perception. I think perhaps uh, people with talent, uh, people uh, who are achieving uh, are perhaps marginalized or perhaps they're not brought to the forefront and, and given recognition uh, and instead maybe you know our perception is uh, clouded by negativity or negative issues you know perhaps it, it is a thought which comes to my mind perhaps that actually we do have a lot of uh, diamonds in our backyard but we don't show them off to the world and we don't show them to each other 
Is that our own humility, do you think? No, no, I don't think that's, that's humility at all. Uh, far from it. I, I think that is uh, uh, negativity. And I think that is uh, giving sway to, to negativity and giving um, centre stage to uh, issues, problems, um, and just negativity as, as a whole. As opposed to solutions. Uh, as, as opposed to solutions, as opposed to, to celebrating uh, people's achievements. Um, I think that's probably more what it is. You know, because, for, you know, as an example, people say there are not many Sikhs who do martial arts or many Sikhs who fighters or athletes. But, uh, you know, because obviously I'm in this field, I know so many really good Sikh fighters, you know, really good ones. You know, we've had, we've had world champions, we've had wrestling champions, yeah. we've had people representing in the Olympics, you know, we've had uh, Sikhs competing in the Olympics, you know, even this time around, Canada, India, uh, UK, you know, we've got a lot of talented sports people. We've got a lot of talented musicians who've done great stuff in m music, uh, arts, uh, politics, uh, military, you know, we, we have so many celebrated people, but yet, why do we choose uh, to uh, perpetuate this idea that uh, we're so far behind everybody and, uh, you know, we're lacking in some way? Why do we not uh, work with what we have, uh, promote it? Because the net result of that will be that it will inspire more people. So, you know, success builds upon success. Yeah, absolutely, it does, yeah. Baji, that's all we've got time for this week. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm for sure the, the the viewers at home feel exactly the same way. A uh, an audience with Subir Singh Kandola today, um, buddy. Thank you again for, for coming in. But that's all thank we've so got much. time for um, this week on Encounters. Uh, we feel that we've definitely given you an ordinary conversation with an extraordinary individual today. Um, and if there's anything we can take away from it, it is don't dwell on negativity. There are positives out there. There is a community out there, a multi-skilled, multi-faceted community. And if we all reach out to each other, there is nothing that the Sikh community cannot achieve and has not already achieved, whether you know about it or not. That's the thought for today. Welcome to Encounters on Akal Channel. We'll see you again next week. Wahe Guruji Ka Khalsa. Wahe Guruji Ki Fateh.